Melody sales first blow, son. Hello, Flossum people. Welcome to the Salesforce Flossum channel. I'm very, very excited about the video today because I'm going to help you build most of your flow solutions by using just three steps. At the end, I will also provide a flow building template and walk you through with an example. So make sure you watch until the end. Let's get started. To give you some background, one of the most common challenges when teaching flow is that it's really hard to find a good example that applies to everyone. Some solutions work great for me, but they might not mean much to you. So currently, what we can do is to provide as many use cases as possible to help you become more familiar with flow. Okay, it's not possible to find that one flow, but is it possible to have a standard procedure that could work for most of the basic flow solutions, no matter what products or what objects you're using? I think the answer is yes. So I analyzed over more than 200 flows and 150 community cases I have helped with and have created this template, which only includes three steps. That's right, three steps is all it takes. And I truly believe it will help you as a flow beginner to scale up really quickly. So let's jump right into our flow building three step guide. Step one, have a clear problem statement. Most of the flow experts will agree on this one. In order to build an efficient solution, first you need to state your problem precisely. That includes when should the flow runs, what objects should be involved, and what do you want to achieve at the end. This is very important because essentially, flow are just linear solutions, meaning that things always happen one after the other. When building flow, all we need to do is to find the shortest line that connects every part of the problem. If you don't have a clear definition of the problem, you might end up making unnecessarily detours. So first thing first, be crystal clear about your objective. Step two, plot down the data model. When it comes to flow, if we exclude the custom actions or components, the elements we can use are actually quite limited. But flow is still highly flexible because we can manipulate many different objects freely. There are standard objects like account or opportunity that are easy to understand, but there are also many advanced objects like record type, email message, entity or field definition, and so on. To become fluent in flow, having the overview of the data model involved is as important as knowing the basic of flow concepts. So to draw the data model, we will use the standard Salesforce notation. For one to many relationship, you put a fork between two objects, and the fork side will be the child side. For example, this is saying account is the parent and opportunity and contact are the child, and one account can have many opportunities. For many to many relationships, draw down the junction objects explicitly as well. For example, opportunity and contact can have many to many relationships, so we will draw down their junction object, which is opportunity contact row. Finally, for the parent side, I will put it one level up and vice versa. When you build more advanced flows, you will start using a lot of objects that we don't see from the user interface. So make sure you search and utilize the developer guides. Step three, draw the line and convert it into flow. To summarize, flow creates linear solutions that run through your data model to get to the goal. So after the previous two steps, now you just need to draw that line, identify the action, and convert them into flow steps. Then you will have your first draft solution. So now let's practice with a template and an example. So the example today is when an opportunity is closed home, we want to check a box on the related account and the related contacts that's identified from the opportunity contact row object. So let's start with step one, have a clear problem statement. You always want to use this problem structure. When something happens on which object, I want to do something on which object. For the first blank, you can fill in the values such as user clicks, record changes, specific time comes, platform event arrives, or another automation runs. And each of the value corresponds to a specific type of flow. If you want to understand more, you can see our all about flow session. And the blank after I want to 
you can fill in the actions such as update records, send emails, and so on. And the two blanks before the object, this will identify our start and end of the flow. An additional note is if it's a record trigger flow, do we want to update the same record or not? If we want to update the same record, we will use a before trigger. If not, we will use an after trigger. So let's put our business case into this template. We are saying when a record change on the opportunity object, I want to update record on account and contact object. In this record trigger flow, I want to update other records than the triggering record. So here, the opportunity object will be the start. Account and contact will be the end. Since we are updating other records than opportunity, we are using an after trigger. Then it comes to step two, plot down the data model. So here, the objects involved will be account, contact, opportunity, and the junction object, opportunity, contact, row. Because account is the parent for both opportunity and contact, I put it at the, the highest level, and I draw two relationships to contact and opportunity. And since opportunity contact row is the junction object, I put it at the lowest level, and I put two relationships line from contact and opportunity. So this is the data model involved in our current flow solution. After we have the goal and the data model, now it's the fun part. Draw the line and convert that into flow. In this step, there are actually six different sub-steps. We will go through every one of them. The first one is start and end. So like we said, opportunity is the start and account and contact are the end. You might wonder, hey, how can I have two ends in a flow solution? We will talk about this in the next step. The next step is ask, what do I need? So in this case, because I want to update account and contact, the most important thing I need will be the account ID and the contact IDs. So from opportunity to get the contact ID, you just draw the line based on the data model. I will need to go through the opportunity contact row and go to contact. And from opportunity, if I want to get the account ID, I will just go directly from opportunity to account. And here you will see I wrote down the numbers of the steps because the steps are diverging from opportunity. Whichever you put at the end will be the actual end of your flow solution. So here we get the contact ID first, and then we go ahead to get the account ID. So the account will be our final end of the flow. Alternatively, you can also try to get the account ID first and then get the contact IDs afterwards. In that case, contact will be the actual end of the flow. The next step is, it sounds a bit weird. It's called down, get records, up, look up. Many people might ask, when is the timing that I should use get records? The answer to that question is just look at your data model. So if you're going from one object to the other downwards, you will need to use a get records. If you're going from one object to the other upwards, you will need to use lookup. And then that is the same for step three as well, because we're going from opportunity to account. It's going upwards, so we will use a lookup. So here to be more concise, what is downwards and upwards? Downwards is going from the parent side to the child side. That's the time you will need to use get records. And going upwards is going from the child side to the parent side. In that case, you just need to use a lookup. The lookup is something that looks like this. You can find another record's information from the current variable. So that's the general rule of when you should use get records and when you don't need to. And I think this is the most important steps of all the sub steps here. Of course, there are some exceptions to this general rule. When you're going upwards, you might sometimes need to use get records. It all depends on whether the lookup can get the fields that you need. For example, here you can see from the opportunity variable, I can only get the account ID. But today, if you need other account fields like account name or annual revenue, things like that, since you couldn't find them from the lookup, you will need to use the get records. So let me summarize again. Going downwards, always use get records. Going upwards, always try to use lookup. If lookup couldn't get what you need, use get records instead. 
And the next step is easy. Identify if there's many records. If there are many records, you will need to use a loop. So here, for example, we might get many opportunity contact rows. So there are many records here. That's why we will need to add a loop here. And the next step is to identify which elements we need to use. So right now we have the backbone of our flow solution. We just need to convert this into the flow language. So starting from step one, get records, we will use the get records element for step two, because we have a loop. So we will use the loop element and use the assignments inside that loop. And then because we're using lookup, so we don't need the get records element. We can just use the update records element to update all the contacts. And step three is the same because we have lookup. We don't need a get records element. We can simply use an update records element to update the account. So that's it. We have our draft, our solution. Now all we need to do is just to press them into a line so we can build them in flow. So have this graph by your side. First, we start with opportunity. The first thing we need to do is to get all the opportunity contact rows. Since there are many opportunity contact rows, we will need to add a loop. Inside each iteration, we will need to update the contact variable and then add them into a collection. This is a very standardized procedures when it comes to loop. Once we finish the loop, we just need to update all the contacts at once. And finally, step three, we want to update the account record. So our flow will look like this. By using these three steps, building flow becomes really simple. And I believe this template will cover 80 to 95% of the flow that you built. So once we know about this template, what's next? The next thing we need to do is to continue to improve. And that includes asking ourselves many different questions. The first question would be, have we identified any patterns? For example, if there is loop, it always follows the same patterns. By identifying the patterns, you can think about whether you can make them into subflows so you can use them repeatedly. And also, if there is any patterns, you can ask yourself, is that the best practice to do so? By asking yourself these kind of questions, you will discover quickly that there's actually a certain set of procedures that show up again and again in your flow. Once you're familiar with all those patterns, building flow become a lot easier. The second question you can ask is, is there a way we can build more efficient solutions? And that includes, can we use less elements? Can we use less DML statement or SQL queries? Or can we have less decision notes to make the flow looks more concise? Lastly, we can also think about using custom components or actions so your flow will become a lot more performance oriented and efficient. And finally is practice makes perfection. In the beginning, it is really hard to visualize the template in your head. You can try to write down in a paper and then just follow the steps through. But once you're more and more familiar with building flow, you will find out that this template will just sit in your mind. You don't need to think about what the data model is anymore. You can just naturally know what you're going to do next. So I would say if you're just starting, find a few use cases and practice with this template. Once you're more familiar with the template and the structure, you will be able to create that blueprint in your mind and build the flow really fast and efficiently. That concludes our three-step guide to build your flows. I hope you find this helpful and good luck with all the future buildings. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, and turn on notification. Salesforce Flossom, thank you for watching.